That is an outrageous claim. And this is why I put out this kind of content is I go and I extract information from the CDC databases and uh, from the state departments of health and demonstrate that there's just absolutely no way that could be. It can't. And the way they say it, okay, this is where the distortion comes, right? ABC says something like 99, that, that factoid. Mm -hmm. And then they quote um, a, uh, a statement from a Department of Health from a state. And then you go to that particular uh, citation, and they don't give you any data, but they say, Oh, at the end of it, the CDC says that 99% of the people are uh, di who are dying are, are uh, unvaccinated. So you have the circular, like he says that person, that person says this. But if you'd actually download the data from the CDC uh, databases, which I do on a regular basis, you know what's really fascinating? Is that mm. they do not tell you what the vaccination status is of the people who are perishing or getting sick. They don't tell us. They'll tell you everything else, but they won't tell you who is vaccinated and who is unvaccinated. Okay, but what they do know uh, tell us is how many people are dying in every jurisdiction on a weekly basis, and we both know that they keep meticulous records of who is vaccinated and who isn't, but they're not putting it together, right? Mm. Why is this? I don't know, but because they're not putting it together, they can make these claims. Because if you go and look at the data from some of these departments of health, uh, state departments of health, they what they really are saying is like, if you look at Colorado, 96% um, of the people who are dying are unvaccinated. And then you go beyond the headline and it says, this was in a period between um, January 1st and June 30th. What's wrong with this? Right, what's wrong with the statement, right? Here's the problem. In January, guess how many people were um, vaccinated fully? Zero. Wow. You know, the vaccines came out in December 14th. It takes four weeks to become fully vaccinated. Guess, you know, when, when were deaths the highest? January, mm. February. So because they use that time window and they're not correcting for the numbers at risk, which is sort of the denominator in all of this, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm going into the math too much, but they, they can make that statement, which is factually true, if you actually look at the people who are, are dying, 96% of them would be unvaccinated, but there was no vaccinated people around back then. You right, so this, so like, it wasn't, you know, I just I just wanna clarify this just in case anybody in the uh, in the audience didn't hear it the way that I heard it. What you're, like, what you're saying is they're making it sound like the unvaccinated are by choice as but they they take from a sample when there was no choice there were no vaccines there so it's you know i guess what i'm hearing is this is the way it seems like news stations when they need to have the conclusion before the story comes out when you have to arrive at a specific conclusion so you have to search for the type of data that you can make an article out of to arrive at what the the preordained agenda is, and I think all media has this, a preordained agenda, mm -hmm. then the only way that you can show some some numbers like 96% of people in Colorado who died during this period were the unvaccinated without actually expressing the the issue with that, it is. It's it's like it's it's lying without lying. Like um I've I've said this before where uh, an article on on the cover I've I've seen this before it said Michael Jackson and Faye Dunaway get married mm -hmm. factually true statement but very very misleading because they didn't marry one another they yeah, married they both, different yeah. people yeah. yeah so so this headline is causing the headline which I mean I don't know what the statistics are but I guarantee most people they read the headline that's their first impression that's what sticks in them the most they yeah. some people read meticulously through it and then might be like oh yes that balances out what I thought it was but mm -hmm. it, there's still something with that first impression but most people they read the headline and they're like I fucking knew it and then they scroll through and they they only 
they they may even miss that part of it or not piece it together because they're not looking for anything other than what their emotions are telling them to believe at the moment. So they may not see what you saw in that, which is nobody was vaccinated at the beginning of this period that they took from. So their Correct. sample, their sample was off. Yes, yes. So, and yeah. here's the thing: is like, why would anyone, you know, question it the way I question it? Because you know, most people regard uh, what they're told as being true, and you know, you just happen to have some experience in medicine and statistics. Uh, with vaccines. And when they make that claim, I'm like, how is that possible? That's impossible. And, you know, that's that's sort of the impetus to look further. But what you said there, Ben, was really interesting, right? Because it, the reason why I bring this up is we have this, you know, culture that says you must trust the science. I trust the science. You know, you see it on uh, road signs in Massachusetts, like when you're driving down the pike, it's to get vaccinated, trust the science, you know, all this stuff about trusting the science. Really? You think science is what the New York Times headline says the science says? Is that what you mm -hmm. think science is? Like right. how many people, like you just said, uh, will read no further than the headline? Oh, it's in the Times. It's Washington Post. It, it says that's that's the science. It's because it came from that that platform. How many people actually read the whole article? You know, this is yeah. an article that talks about new CDC studies shows this, or, you know, this came out of JAMA. So they read the article, but do they go to the article that the that the that the New York Times cited and read that. Very few do that, right? Yeah. And of the few that actually go and read the JAMA article, that's the Journal of American uh, American Medical <laughs> Association or you know British Medical Journal, whatever, wherever it is, of the people that read the actual publication, how many of those have the capacity to critique it? How many people you, you know? Ha go and actually read the whole study and um, read where the authors of the study themselves acknowledge the uncertainty in their conclusions. How many people have the ability to challenge the methodology that they were that were used? How many people can find where the uncertainty is in the statistical analysis? Almost none. <laughs> but any reasonable, you know, scientific publication, all of the uncertainty is laid out there for you if you're willing to read it. Do you think that gets to the headline of the New York Times? No, never. Mm. So when we say, oh, you got to trust the science, please, you know, unless you're a scientist that knows how to actually analyze this data, you're not trusting the science. You're trusting what the New York Times is telling you the science says. And so this is how, you know, everything is getting distorted because these people are so certain that they're right because they're trusting the science, like their neighbor Joe down the street is trusting the science and, you know, he knows someone that uh, you know has a friend who's a, a scientist, and that's what the scientist says. We're trusting people and media platforms. And how many, you know, honestly, come on, people, like how, how many ads from pharmaceutical industries are on these platforms? You don't think that there's some complicity there in not giving you a balanced view, really? I mean, yeah. this is it's 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 really, really, you know, I, I see this happen. And the reason why I'm so um, vociferous about this is that I feel like the, like I have I understand completely when the average person says, I don't I don't know what to believe. I, I don't. I get it. I understand. I have complete compassion for you. And I understand that what predicament you're in. It is the people. It's my own colleagues that I have um, very little tolerance for. Right. You know, we, we took an oath, we all did, to do no harm, and we, we've become a, uh, and, and forgive me, like, for all my colleagues out there, like, I know you're working hard, you know, and I know that you want to do the right thing. I am not at all saying that you guys are all, you know, self-serving uh, jerks. We're all trying. But we were trained, at least I was, in how to act, how to challenge what you're being told, you know, and that. I know that we're all so busy and we're all trying to do the right thing and, you know, dealing with a pandemic and going to work every day and not knowing whether you're going to contract the disease or not, not having enough protective uh, equipment was horrible. I get it. But it's our responsibility to challenge what we're being told before we follow what we're being told. Make sure you all head over to benjosephstewart.com, become a member. You'll have access to the growing library of deeper dives where I talk about all the stuff that I really can't talk about on YouTube.
Make sure you get involved in the Discord chat. That's where a lot of the conversation is happening, talking about new theories, being able to interweave into the greater conversation that is how we awaken infinity. That's our highest potential. And I just want to remind you, you are the most powerful technology ever known to creation. Wield it like an artist with a conscience.